The following is a rebroadcast of the 1993 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Be sure to join Doug Brown and Dan Murphy on Sunday, October 10th for a brand new season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. The fifth annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions began three weeks ago. And early on, it was Neil Goslin dictating the tempo, getting out to quick leads in his first two matches as he beat Bob Mazur and Tom Morgan. Last week, a classic battle. Gosselin, shooting for his third straight win, struggled in game one, as did his opponent, number three seed Peter Flynn. Still, it was Gosselin who took the early lead, but there had been no indication at all of the fireworks still to come. In game two, each bowler clicked for seven spares as the scores and the crowd noise went up. He's made two difficult ones already. Let's see if he can make this oh, one. Oh, my! Oh, oh my! After withstanding the Flynn challenge in Game 2, Gosselin still led by 15 with four boxes to go in the match. But Peter Flynn saved some more fireworks for the end. Peter needs a fill, a sizable fill, he and then another mark had a chance. At least six on this ball. Keep himself alive. Oh, oh yes! Right. Oh, my! Oh. <laughs> what a throw that was for Peter Flynn. Neil Gosselin is applauding in the background. Strike on spare. Today, Peter Flynn meets number two seed Rico Baldinelli. This is Candlepin Stars and Strikes and week four of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Hi everybody and welcome to semi-final week of the 1993 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We're glad to have you with us, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Uh, we move to the next to last week of the regular season. Uh, semi-finals here and then of course at one o'clock immediately following on doubles. We get a lot of big names and a lot of big stories developing. Uh, Peter Flynn is going to be with us both hours. Absolutely, and uh, everyone's still buzzing about last week's <laughs> show. And uh, what a crowd we got. A uh, huge crowd. Let's meet our two bowlers for our semifinal match. First of all, our number three seed. A very dramatic win last week. Uh, if you missed it, uh, you missed a good one because this guy came up with a dramatic late win, winning it on his final ball from Bradford, Massachusetts, Peter Flynn. Okay, Peter comes in averaging 134, high single of 211, and a uh, Great, 408 last week. That's right, to win by just four pins over Neil Goslin, who had won the first two matches of this Tournament of Champions. So now Peter will try to make it two in a row on his own, and he will face our number two seed, making only his second appearance here on Stars and Strikes from Amesbury, Massachusetts, Rico Baldinelli. Okay, Rico comes in averaging 120, has a high single of 181, 459 for high triple. The runner-up in this match will receive third-place prize money of $400. The winner, of course, gets a chance to come back in next week's final for a shot at $1,500 and the overall championship. Also, we have $50 up for grabs in the bonus ball contest later on. A couple of brand new sets of bowling balls, too. Perhaps you'll win one if we have your postcard. We hope we've got it here. If we do, you have a chance to win. But either way, you'll win because we're going to have a great match here. Three strings starting between Peter Flynn and Rico Baldinelli, and we'll do it right after we do these messages. Don't go away. All right, we're to the semifinals, and we are left with our top three seeds. Peter Flynn, outstanding match last week, beat Neil Goslin 408 to 404, throwing a strike on spare in the last box to win it. So Peter gets a shot at Rico Baldinelli in the semifinals today. The winner of this match advances to face Paul Berger next week in the championship match for the $1,500 first prize. Peter Flynn now to toe the line first and get this match started. And uh, I'll tell you what. First thing exciting that happens, this crowd is going to explode. Whoa. They cheered when the lights came on, <laughs> so I mean, they're ready. That wasn't too exciting, that first ball. Peter, so we'll wait another box. Or you might convert this, you never know. Last week, uh, oh, oh, I, oh, I caught oh, a what? Oh, <laughs> as I started to say, he picked up some great shots last week, so, uh, well. Look at that. Oh, Words wow. don't describe it. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was talking to the, uh, the two Morgans after they hung around last week and watched uh, Peter, and they were both saying the remarkable spares he made just to keep himself close to be able to, to catch Neil Gosling in the end. And two to start this match. And now Rico Baldinelli, who made his very first appearance here on Stars and Strikes, only 
four weeks ago. He was the last man to qualify for the Tournament of Champions back on April 18th. He knocked off Bob Kelly, and that was an outstanding match too. 414 to 399. So in his first uh, appearance here, he not only won, but he got into the got into the Tournament of Champions and as the number two seed. We weren't kidding about the crowd. There are there are a <laughs> lot of people here. I would say our biggest crowd ever Could be. for a tournament of champions. Could be. Certainly ranks right up there with the best of them. And obviously a very appreciative crowd because turn some lights on, they applaud, they applaud because Doug was late coming up. Uh, anything. Oh, we're not going to get into a conversation about people being late, are we? <laughs> I, was, I don't. I don't I think you here. want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy! A nine for Rico. Seventeen opening pair. Peter Flynn on a mark. Peter's having himself quite a spring here on the winds. He and Chuck Godzik have won three matches already in the doubles tournament of champions, putting together a terrific string of scores. And of course he came up with that dramatic win here last week. Chuck and Peter will try and make it four in a row at one o'clock today against number two seeds Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney. Right on the head pin again, he leaves the nine. Peter really, his ball backs up. I mean, it, it wants to break from right to left, which would be opposite for a left-hander, but he gets so much arm swing and speed on the ball, it's spinning, but it actually goes down uh, straight cross alley. Oh, oh boy. A lucky oh. break from behind. Just threw that wood in back of the nine pin. <laughs> Ho-hum, just another spare. <laughs> You know, Peter will get his fair share. When he starts getting a few like that, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Rico Baldinelli looking for his first mark, and he may have a setup here on the 5-9. Yes. His first one, as Doug said, in the third. All spares so far in the match. Rico's brought a lot of his family and friends to root him on. Uh, lost that one. It's interesting to watch the contrast of these two guys. Uh, of course, in addition to one being right-handed and one being left-handed, uh, Rico, when he begins his approach, holds the ball down near his knee. And on the other hand, Peter has that large arm swing in both directions when he winds up. Peter to add to his 14-pin lead now with the fill on this mark. Oh my, didn't that start out as a spread eagle? How about a strike? Oh, is that amazing? This is absolutely scary. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I mean, he's getting things that he shouldn't be getting right now. And, uh, and now it's a spare. How to turn a spread eagle into a nine pin spare. Flush right there, spread eagle, pin comes back. Two and four, seven go out, three goes out, and finally the six. Ooh. Oh, but he doesn't <laughs> get the extra pin this time. The five, seven. That ball was a lot better than the first ball the last time. He ended up with a 5-7 split. A 9 box for 90 through 6. Rico Baldinelli from Amesbury, Mass. Works at uh, Baldinelli's Bowl Away. Which is where he bowls a lot. 
not surprisingly. But we talked about this a little bit when Rico was on a few weeks ago. He took a number of years away from the sport, six, seven years away from the game, where he really did not uh, participate much in any organized competition. But uh, he is back, and we talked about it the day he was here. He rolled 130, 140, and 144 for his 414 total. He was very sharp that day. Still looking to catch fire here. Well, five pin tips over. He leaves himself just a two and a four. Very makeable spare. Yes, indeed. Peter Flynn. Drops eight. The three six. Oh, yes. Mark number five. All spares for Peter Flynn. So 100 through seven plus the bonus ball. Ten. He left a 5-7 last time on that lane. This time he's got a piece of wood out front, though. And it's not frozen against the 5. No, not quite enough kick that time. And the 10. Peter's left only one pin standing. Rico working on a spare. <laughs> Off target again to the right. This time a five fill on the spare. Four horsemen plus the five pin in the back. And the 10. The early lead for Peter Flynn. That's Brooklyn side for the strike. First strike of the match. There's no doubt about that one. He gets the one three pocket, just tripping that six pin. Picture perfect strike for Rico. Peter doesn't get the mix on that ball. The three, seven, nine, and ten. This may go though. Yeah, he's got the good angle behind up the wood behind the three pin. He's gonna jump toward the seven. Wants to pinch it on the right hand side if he can. No, too far right. Takes the nine. 127 with a box to go. A reminder that. The presenting sponsor throughout the season for both Candlepin Stars and Strikes and Stars and Strikes doubles. The folks at Tri-State Megabucks says Peter gets a strike in the tenth. Rico. That's good defense. Yeah, Rico is so interested in getting up there and trying to get his double that he, uh, he forgot he had to let Peter fill this one. <laughs> that's good defense. I don't think right. he had Peter convinced though. Just imagine being rich. The folks at Tri-State Megabucks. Supporters wrapping up their fifth year of sponsorship here on Stars and Strikes. Double strike in the 10th. There's your double. I think Rico made Peter mad. <laughs> Rico knew what he's doing. He wanted to sit him down. <laughs> 147 and a ball to come. And this is just game number one. A little high that time, and he'll settle for seven and a 154. 
A 154 with seven marks and uh, a laugh shared between the two bowlers as Rico finally gets his turn. <laughs> now he's working on a strike. Just off to the left side. Four horsemen to the right, one, three, six, ten. Seven is the fill. Which the good news for Peter Flynn, a double strike, but the bad news that it came in the tenth, where you don't get the full benefit of it. Well, Rico down by 26. Oh boy, that was what he wanted, a box to go. There it is. I think Rico had everybody in the place here kind of leaning and rocking <laughs> to see if that four pin would go over. Stubborn four pin. Don't forget Peter fin finished with his double strike in seven, so just to keep pace, Rico would have to do that much. Boy, pretty good looking ball. Certainly was. <laughs> I heard somebody say, good spot for that one, last box. You don't want to shoot at this having to make a spare. Oh, he almost oh, got that. Oh, oh. <laughs> a nine on the strike and a 120 for Rico Baldinelli. So an early lead for Peter Flynn with an outstanding 154 opening game. We've got two to go here on Stars and Strikes. The fifth annual Tournament of Champions continues after these words. Game two starts with Rico Baldinelli. Lane 32 here at Park Place. Just slipping by the head pin to the left. 1-6-10. So four horsemen minus the three pin. A little too thin. I heard somebody say if the three pin had been there, he might have made it. <laughs> Probably true. They may have been right. Oh, nice pocket hit that time. Very tight in the one three pocket and Rico will shoot at the five pin, but what is the wood going to do? Well, he wants it to turn now. <laughs> Listens to the crowd. And, and there you are. As we uh, wrap up this week and next week here on Stars and Strikes, we'll be uh, running through a, a list of thank yous. There are so many people to thank year to year here on Stars and Strikes, not the least of which uh, bowling fans around New England, all of you who watch the show and continue to support us. We really appreciate it. Nice efficient 10 box by Peter Flynn there on the spread eagle. He moves over to lane 31, trying to match the mark put up by Rico. Well, He'll have to do it on the 6-7. Piece of wood out in front of the 6, and another piece of wood in the channel behind that, that piece, so might be able to snap it across. Hmm. He was just trying to play that left edge of the wood, and he just missed it. Oh, chance for Rico Baldinelli to cut into the lead here, working on this spare fill. And again, uh, Rico seems to have a problem off to the left of the head pin on lane 32. This time the four horsemen, and he can't carry the 10 pin. Yeah. 
Of course, Rico does have one other, uh, or one unusual element in his approach down for a right-hander, and that is he comes at the foul line from the left side of the lane. Yeah, it stand, stands at extreme left side of the approach. Uses the Brooklyn pocket that time. All right, come on. I'd like to see the five pin get out of there, because now he gives himself a triangle in the corner. Six, nine, ten. Got to hurry. Oh! No. That's the type of shot you want to play on the inside. That way you have the benefit of the sidewall to come back with a, with a six pin. The 10 for Rico. $400 to the uh, runner up today. The winner comes back for the championship match next week against Paul Berger. Peter Flynn drops seven. Again, that looked like it was a little full, but he was able to twist out and knock down the six and ten, leaves himself the two, four, and seven. Yes, for the spare. And now they're gone. This first mark of the second game. Last week, Peter had 17 marks, 14 spares. Three strikes. Five, seven, nine, piece of wood in front of the five, angle toward the seven. Be better for a right-hander. Uh -oh. oh, he got it. Not bad for a left-hander either. And we'll take a timeout as Peter Flynn puts that spare up in the fourth. He's got the lead in this match. We'll be back with more in a minute. Rico Baldinelli. Yeah, again on lane 32, the first ball drops off to the left. We're gonna have Cindy Sissom check that piece of wood in front. It's almost directly in front of the head pin. This is gonna be a tough shot either way. I don't know if it would have much effect on the shot, although it would give an extra pin on the plate. It is playable, so. We'll see on the one eight nine. Oh, no, oh, boy. Nice try. Good effort. Nine box. That time off to the right. Our participating sponsors for the Tournament of Champions on Stars and Strikes. The folks at Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time. Somerville Lumber, stop by at any of their fine locations. And Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan on Route 28 in Salem, New Hampshire. The owner of Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, Emmett Horgan, will be here next week to uh, help us award the $1,500 first prize check. And mark down another spare for Peter Flynn after a nine fill on the previous one. How about an eight fill this time? And that wood will have to be checked. That may be closer to the deadwood line. And again, it is directly in the path. It's right between the three and the five pins. This time it'll be removed. And they're applauding Cindy Sissom too. And rightfully so. 
No. <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a nine box. But he has increased his lead to over 50. Four horsemen. For the spare, no. Head pin is still there. 72 through 7. Means that puts some marks up. Well, Rico uh, threw a couple of big strikes toward the end of the first game, but uh, other than that, he's had trouble finding the head pin. That time he got it. Oh boy, I don't know if this is a reward or not. Well, the wood, wood will help on the 2 8. Tough angle on it, though. It's going to be to the left of that front pin, I would think. <laughs> oh, the second piece came off the wall. Mark number six for Rico. Peter Flynn already has 10. Well, that was kind of a funny hit. <laughs> Seven, nine, 10. And it's, it's a makeable spare with a double piece of wood. The biggest problem may be the seven, getting the ball to bounce off the wood. Oh, wow. Pole, and just drove every, all the wood straight back. Here's a makeable shot, the 7 9 10 with yeah. no wood. Maybe with a <laughs> reset button. <laughs> 90 through 7. Peter gets one, though. See, I, I mean, that's so important. I mean, it sounds like a little thing, but even to just get one pin of those three. Give yourself one pin every third ball for three games. There's 30 extra pins. Fortunately, if you're getting one every third ball, it means you're not getting very many marks either. <laughs> We've talked about this uh, even on the double show in recent weeks when Peter's been on. He just, he makes so many good 10 boxes and 9 boxes too in addition to the spares. As he makes another one there, his 11th mark of the match. Rico finds the head pin, but he's got a split. Three, six... 10 on the right and the four pin. Ten left for Rico. And the spare in the tenth. 108 plus a ball. Let's see, seven, on, and it'll stay seven. One fifteen, and a two-game total of two thirty-five for Rico Baldinelli. Peter Flynn already at one hundred, with a markup to fill here in the eighth. With six, four horsemen right seen a lot of this today. Both sides. And he's got it. Peter electing it to play, play electing to play it on the outside. Rather than the one three, he goes outside the head pin, gets the friendly kick off the wall. Boy, we've seen some interesting setups, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Five, eight, and ten. Piece of wood next to the five and eight. Can he get the ball over there or the pin? Oh, yeah. Sure. 
Oh, yeah. You know what? Peter's got a heck of a score working right now. Spare in the 10th makes it 133 plus a ball. He's going to be up near 300 for two games. Oh, just a strike in the 10th. 143 and a two game total, 297 for Peter Flynn. And still one game to go. The winner moves into the championship match next week. We'll be back in a minute. Well, this man is in pretty good shape. I'd say. It's never over until it's mathematically over, but Peter Flynn in 62 pins with one game to go is... Yeah, I remember several times uh, he's blown 62 pin leads. <laughs> <laughs> Any to you? <laughs> <laughs> Any times to you? No. You know, just at the break, uh, I see him sitting there with 297 after two. And I had a career night in the league the other night and bowled 307 for three. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. This wood is getting better all the time for Peter. The 2 4, 6 10. Nope, just missed. I want to start our uh, list of thank yous with some folks at the winds at TV50. And of course, must start out with the director of uh, Stars and Strikes and the head of our terrific crew, Victor Cross. And uh, you'll see the names, as you always do, uh, of our crew at the end of the show. But uh, they do a tremendous job and they put in long hours and uh, we appreciate the effort, guys, as do all the folks at home. It does not go unnoticed. I want to thank also the uh, sales and promotion staffs at WNDS TV 50 and the station manager, Donna Cole. Of course, as you uh, hear every week on the show, Stars and Strikes is a joint production of TV50 and the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association, which is the organization comprising all of the member bowling centers around the state of New Hampshire. Are there any members out of the state right now? or? Uh, is that uh, no? Uh, all, just all, all within the state right now. There had been members outside the right, state at one time. At one time, but in any event, uh, the NHCBA and all the uh, lane operators and the staffs at all of the uh, NHCBA houses help us put together the roll-offs, and there is an awful lot of work involved in that. And we want to thank all of the lane operators and all the people that help them make our jobs a lot easier, providing us with all the uh, names and numbers that we need to. Uh, Get the bowlers here. And another spare for Peter. Three As he tacks four. on three out of four here to start game three. And a special thanks go out to the uh, Goes out to the executive board of the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. The treasurer is Bob La Rochelle. Secretary is Dan La Rochelle. The vice president is Ed Emerson. And the president, but you can call him Dan. <laughs> Dan Murphy. <laughs> They've been called a lot more than Dan. <laughs> Rico Baldinelli takes us to a break with a big strike in the fourth. We'll be back with more on the Tournament of Champions in a minute. Don't go away.
Peter Flynn working on what else? A mark. And a big lead here in the semifinals. Peter, as you just saw a moment ago, looking for his 20th win in just 24 appearances here on Stars and Strikes. 20 and four win you the Cy Young. That's right. Most years. And he is keeping no prisoners right now. You know, the thing that I was just thinking of during the breakdown is that it's been a little longer now since it happened, and so I think people may tend to forget that just two years ago, there was question as to whether this guy would ever bowl again. That's right. He had a very serious uh, medical emergency, spent many, many, many months in rehabilitation, and there was an awful lot of concern about him, and now he is back, and he may just be better than ever. <laughs> Certainly couldn't prove otherwise by his performances here. I know that. Five out of six boxes spares. Well, can he get enough of the wood and turn it to get the five and the ten? Well, it's rolling back, which is going to hurt his chances unless it turns a little. Nine on the strike for Rico. Within the NHCBA, of course, two of the member houses uh, go even more out of their way than, uh, than the rest because they're the two centers that host our tapings here on Stars and Strikes. That would be, of course, Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham for our noon show, Stars and Strikes, which has been hosting us since the show began back in 1984. The owner is Nick Moskilly, and he has an outstanding staff. I want to thank all of them for their help, Bob and Ray and all the rest, Donna, and also the folks at the Willow Tree Restaurant right here inside Park Place Lanes, and the Londonderry Bowling Center, the host for Stars and Strikes Doubles this year as we moved into a new location uh, for the first time. And well, we just had a terrific time over at uh, the Londonderry Bowling Center. Great hospitality. Ted Hatton and Terry Kelly and their fine staff. Tim Lipke and the rest of the guys. Now oh! oh, Peter getting booed now. He missed a single. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> Tough crowd. Oh, he missed it again. This is some slump. We should keep an eye on the total score here for Peter Flynn as he winds down to his final boxes because he has a shot certainly to break the Stars and Strikes Tournament of Champions uh, record. I don't believe he has a shot at the overall record. He's scrambling for my record book here. Wow. Yeah, the wood turned just a little too much. He was to the right of the red line, should maybe should have been a little left. And now, at this point in time, Rico was just thinking about this thing being over. <laughs> you people at home wondering just how much over 400 will Peter Flynn go? The uh, overall record here on Stars and Strikes for high triple. Peter already holds that. He set that back in 1985, a 482. That's out of reach at this point. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's, that's when he was good. <laughs> <laughs> 10 for Rico. A 118, working on a strike. Right he's now, sitting at home saying, I'm going to tell Peter. He's, Peter was sitting right in front of us. He got a good <laughs> chuckle out of that. Right now, Peter is at 4.15, and he's working on a strike in the eighth, and oh. almost, almost the double. The high triple record in the Tournament of Champions in the five years we've been having the program is Tim Lipke with a 4.67. Oh. 
and he threw that against Peter Flynn back in 1991. Peter missed another single. Yes, there is red blood running through his veins. Yeah. 137 with a box to go. So that robs him of the chance of uh, breaking Tim Lipke's record. He's at 434 right now. But he's got a shot at 450 if he puts this mark up. He's got 20 marks. And he will finish with 20. Ho-hum, another 140-some game. Missed two singles and just missed that two-pinner. Still ends with a 147. 444 for Peter Flynn. 154. The 154 opening game, then 143 and 147. Rico just wants to get out of the way at this point. <laughs> and while we were thanking folks at the Londonderry Bowling Center, the host of uh, Stars and Strikes Doubles this year, we don't want to forget everybody at TR's Tavern, located inside the Londonderry Bowling Center. We'll be thanking some more folks next week, but obviously there are many people that help bring it all to you here on Stars and Strikes every week. Rico Baldinelli will finish up with a spare in the 10th, his 10th mark. But it was just a case of too much Peter Flynn today. He had a close match last week, but not this time. 109 for Rico Baldinelli and a 344. So the numbers tell the story. A big day for Peter Flynn. 20 marks in 30 boxes. And the big 444. He will be in the finals next week against Paul Berger. We'll tell you about that match and about our doubles semifinal coming up next here on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. The Tournament of Champions continues. All right, our semifinal singles match is over and dominated by Peter Flynn. I don't know if there's uh, too much more you can say about that performance. Uh, three games over 140 and a 444 total. You know, I, I really think I would have had a shot at him <laughs> because he's a friend of mine. I think he would have gave me a fifth game, and I think I would have caught him. <laughs> fifth game, right. Yeah. Uh, that was just a terrific performance, and, uh, of course, Peter moves into the uh, finals now against uh, Paul Berger. And don't forget, he's coming up uh, in doubles as well, immediately following here on the wins. But let's uh, talk to our runner-up first. We get some money to give away to Rico Baldinelli. Come on up. Whoop. Hi. Uh, you, you, could you do me a favor and just reach right down and? Uh, don't worry, didn't. Bother. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that. Congratulations, Rico, and uh, we appreciate uh, your being here. The $400 check for third place. Uh, uh, not as successful as the first time you're here, but boy, you, you caught somebody who was just very hot today. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as successful, but I still had a lot of fun. It was, it was fun watching him bowl at full forty. <laughs> wasn't it? That was unbelievable. Huh? Well, well, I, I kept it to 100 anyway. Yeah. Down to 100 anyway. So. <laughs> we appreciate you being here. Congratulations. We hope to see more of you next season. Okay, thank All right. you. Rico thank you. Baldinelli, thanks very much. We appreciate it. All right, Peter Flynn. The same drill on the uh, bonus ball contest. We've got $50 in the jackpot right now. A couple of sets of bowling balls on the line, too, if we get a match. Someone says, don't throw a strike. Okay, it's a nine drop. It's a nine drop. Now, would you have made this single? Or, or not. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> not a win, not a win. <laughs> Probably not. No question about that. Geneva Satterfield guessed eight. So Geneva in Concord, New Hampshire. We have a run on Concord. You have a lot of your friends writing in. Is that what's happening? Some of my relatives. <laughs> Geneva will be getting a, uh, a nice consolation prize for us, uh, from us. And uh, the jackpot will go up to $60 next week. And you'll be here next week. Uh, sure just kind of a ho-hum 444. <laughs> <laughs> no such animal, but... Uh, uh, it was going my way. It was Paul was there, and it was. It it sometimes seems like I mean a lot of times when you see somebody roll a big first game, like you had, that maybe there's a little dip somewhere, but it just was very consistent for you yeah, all day. It just kept going. Yeah, very fortunate. What do you think about Paul Berger next week? Robo bowler. 
<laughs> he don't lose. Maybe he'll let me steal. Him, you know? I just got to say hi to John Callahan and people at like Grandpa's printing my sponsor. All right. So I can do some selling. <laughs> that was pretty Thank subtle. You. You're, you're, getting, you're getting pretty good at this. <laughs> I may take Danny's job over. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Congratulations. We look forward to that match next week. All right. And here it is, the setup for next week. Number three, Peter Flynn advances with his second straight win. Paul Berger, our number one seed, the guy who has uh, been in all five Tournament of Champions. The thing that's amazing about that is that no one else has been in more than two of them, and he's been in all five. Well, if you want uh, experience, we've got it next week, and uh, the matchup on paper certainly looks terrific. All right, the question now is, uh, can Peter Flynn qualify for both finals? Because he's going to be coming up in just a moment in the semifinals of the doubles Tournament of Champions as well. It'll be Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn against Brian Fuller and Steve Vadney. Until then, for my partner Dan Murphy... And the whole TV50 crew, Doug Brown, don't forget to join us next Sunday at 12 noon, the last week of the regular season for our championship matches, but we've got doubles coming right up. Stay with us.